everyone, I'm Mackenzie and I am a third year IE major and a rock climbing IIT in Orgit. So today we're going to be talking about the Orgit acronym. So like what is Orgit? What's an IIT? What's all these other things you may or may have not heard that you probably should know? Um, so no worries, I will answer all of your questions. Uh, believe it or not, we will also be talking about the one acronym that nobody knows. So get excited for that. We're just gonna kick it off with the basics. So the CRC, which you've probably heard. Um, that is the Georgia Tech Campus Recreation Center, which is where all of the weights are. That's where Orgit itself is located and where a bunch of other things are. It's pretty much the athletic gym of Georgia Tech. Um, in addition, a facet under the CRC is the LCC, which is the Leadership Challenge Course. Now this isn't technically tied in with Orgit, um, however, it is in the outdoor program of the CRC. And the Leadership Challenge Course is the big, if you look over on campus over in Burger Bowl, it's the big towers that are metal and it has like the ropes courses all around it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Orgit, which is Outdoor Recreation Georgia Tech. Now you can assume here, that's where all the outdoor recreation fun goes down. Um, that is also where we have all of our sports and where we rent out gear to students and where we have trips that go out. So in the Orgit work staff under the CRC, so these are the ones employed by Georgia Tech, there are two uh, staff members that work for Orgit. So the first one is Ador. Now, surprise, Ador is a person. Um, for some of you who are in Orgit and have seen our checkout sheets, all the time it says you must go to Ador to get this signed and everyone's like, where is Ador? Not where, it's who. Um, so Ador stands for the Associate Director of Outdoor Recreation and right now that is our Mr. David Nobby. <laughs> um, and for all the cool kids out there, we call him Nobby, just so you know. <laughs> um, and then after that is our EAC, which is the Expeditions and Adventure Coordinator, which is Tyler Joy. So with that being said, we do have a way to govern Orgit and that's with our OEB. So that is the Orgit Executive Board. Now this contains all of our VPs and the president um, and the coordinators. And within them, the only acronyms you really need to know there is VP stands for Vice President, pretty self-explanatory. Um, there is also NPS, which is the new and prospective staff liaison. Um, that person is in charge of new and prospective staff, <laughs> pretty much. Um, but anyways, there's more positions under there. I don't want to go into too much detail. We got a lot of acronyms to cover. So our staffing is actually called an instructional program, which is IP. Um, this includes the staffing progression, which I'll go over in a minute, as well as trips available to GCT students that the sport takes out. Um, on these trips, we operate by Leave No Trace, which is LNT. Um, and this essentially, there's a list of rules online with LNT, but basically it's leave it as you found it. Don't leave like trash around. Don't ruin the environment pretty much. So let's hop over to staffing real quick. Now, before we even become staff, we have to sign an MOU, which is, it's, I'm gonna mess this up, but it stands for Memorandum of Understanding. <laughs> but that's what you sign to become an, a volunteer of the state pretty much, and to show or that you understand the structure and what you're getting into. After you've done that, you become an instructor in training, which is an IIT. And from there, as you get checkoffs and keep going, you can move on to other levels. Uh, so after you've gotten your checkoffs for IIT, you can move on to an instructor, which would be denoted with an I. Now, no one uses the I acronym, just if you want to know the lingo. It's only the letter I, so it's super confusing, so just call them instructors. Uh, but all the other staffing, we do use the acronyms. So after instructor, you can become a TL, which is a trip leader. And once you've become comfortable there, done there enough amount of trips and have the technical skills down, you can become an STL or a senior trip leader. In addition, there is one more type of staffing that is not tied into your progression with your checkoffs as all of these four were, um, but it's actually with our expeditions. So these are called ELs, they're expedition leaders. These people do not necessarily have to be trip leaders as expeditions are not always within one sport. Um, but these people are specifically chosen by Orgit, OEB, and your ADOR and EAC, throwing those acronyms back in, <laughs> to become expedition leaders, whether they're on check treks or proposed expeditions that are passed within Orgit. Moving on, if you just noticed, I mentioned a little thing called tech treks. So I'm going to make a quick comment on these. Um, you'll see this around TTAK, um, TTM, TTSE, a lot of T's, right? These all stand for Tech Treks and then some locations. So TTAK would be Tech Treks Alaska. Uh, TTM is TT Montana. 
and TTSE is Tech Trek Southeast, which is actually not happening anymore. Each trip is different, um, and there are actually more than the ones I listed. I just listed the common acronyms. So to put Tech Trek simply, it is a summer program that brings in incoming freshmen, and it takes them outdoors to experience really cool things. Moving on is our first aid. You'll probably hear acronyms like WUFA, AFA, WUFER, WIMPED, whatever the heck WIMPED is. Um, and so that all relates to wilderness first aid. Okay, so starting off, the first course in your wilderness first aid training is wilderness first aid. Uh, it requires 20 hours. Uh, tech offers a course over the weekend and spring semester. And it's very common among order staff to go through this, but it's not required. It is only required for trip leaders to have. Um, moving on, we have AFA, which is Advanced Wilderness First Aid. It adds on another 20 hours, so you're at 40 now. And then during spring break, Tech does Wilderness First Responder, which is 80 hours of training. That's like peak training. If you're not trying to be a medical professional, like you're doing good. Um, and then after that, if you want to take it a step further, Tech does not offer this again, because this is more for medical professionals, but you can go into WIMT, which is Wilderness EMT. We do actually have some orchardiers who have that, which is super cool, um, but that is by no means any standard. And then we're going to round out with a little surprise acronym. I had to look a lot for this one because this is the acronym that nobody knows at all. So it is CORE. Now I'm going to give you five seconds to guess what CORE stands for. And I'm going to cut that now. I know that wasn't five seconds, but I also know you don't know what CORE stands for. So I'm going to tell you. The C stands for expanded capacity to lead. The C is the incapacity. Um, o is skills to steward an organization with the O in organization. Um, R is lifelong relationships. And then E is leadership experience. Now, if you're unaware, our core program is a freshman experience program that takes in up to 20 students and takes them through a year of leadership training within Orgid. I highly recommend applying. I am actually going to be the coordinator this year, along with Emily Lyon, and uh, come hang with us because we're super excited. But anyways, that is the acronym for CORE. So if you're an Orgid tier, you can whip that out and surprise all your fellow Orgid tiers. And if you're not an Orgid, you can really impress some Orgid tiers. So keep that one in your pocket. <laughs> But anyways, that's pretty much all of the acronyms you need to know to be a successful understanding orgiteer. I hope to see you guys on campus, at sport meetings, and outside soon. <laughs>